Hello everybody and welcome back to another YouTube video. My name is John Hammond. We're still looking at the Kaizen CTF, uh, checking out the Maryland competition, the capture the flag game that was going on last weekend on Friday. Uh, and I want to show off this last challenge for you, uh, Pickled Beats. Um, it was one of the exploitation ones. It was a challenge that I did not solve during the competition and I'm still very, very sour about it because I, I know that I could have solved it and I know I should have solved it. And it honestly is the difference between what put us in second place and what could have had us in first place. Now the competition is over, I have finally solved it, and uh, <laughs> check it out on the scoreboard, uh, that's currently what puts us at the very top. But again, it's, it's the, com the competition has ended, the competition is over. So, <laughs> whatever, I still want to show it off to you guys, Pickled Beats, um, showing off some of the Python Pickle library. So the, the challenge here is, I'm a big fan of Beats, so I made an, an application so people could send me their best Beats. Read the file called Flag in the directory that the server is stored in. So it gives us, I, I did end up using the hint at the very end of the of the competition, even though it told me everything I already knew. Yeah, it's the pickle module. Um, it's not very secure. Originally, the challenge was only 100 points, but it only took away 10 points. So even if we had it used the hint, we still would have jumped up to first place like I currently am in now, quote-unquote, although the competition is over. We finished in second place. So whatever. I'll download this, and we can take a look at it. I can show you the source code for what's running on the server. Um, we'll create a new directory called Pickled Beats. Go ahead and save it. Jump over to our uh, terminal here. Move back into uh, Pickled Beats. Unzip it here. And now we've got this server.python file. Oh, sorry. Server.py. And it uses Pickle, Base64, and Sys. And it creates this object for us. The class and it says, Welcome to my beat receiver. I'm on a quest to find the best beats in the world. Send me your best beats when you're ready. So it takes in our input and it base64 decodes it and then it turns that into a object by unloading or load string of that beat. It, it, it looks like pickle. The pickle module in, in Python can like serialize a Python object and create Python data. So he says, thanks for your beat. Here's the name. It sounds delicious. So it does end up using the object that we give it. So we can take advantage of this. I'll show off the Python pickle object if you haven't heard of it before, but you've, you may have seen me use it in... Um, like some of the Python challenge, stuff like that. There's a lot of documentation on it, um, and they do say uh, do not trust any pickle that you have seen before because it can or contain malicious code that can run arbitrary Python code or anything else. Um, again, it even goes through that in the documentation. It says it's not really secure against maliciously constructed data. Never trust or unpickle data from an untrusted or authenticated source. So that's what we can take advantage of. And honestly, I should have been able to do it during the competition because um, I totally know how to exploit it, but I didn't get it in the right syntax or the right form. If you do a little bit of uh, Googling for pickled Python stuff, um, there's a big blog that's even, the answer's right here. Um, it explains that you can use the Python pickle serialization library and create an object that will just run any code you want. Um, in our case, we can just say, uh, create an object that will run, like, you know, a shell, run bash or sh. Once the Python object has been created or reduced, it'll just return that shell for us. And they even use that base64 encode uh, option. So we can literally just copy this code and change it to just say cat flag or get the flag from the directory because it, we can have it run arbitrary code just like this. So I'll copy this. Literally just copy this code. You don't have to use C pickle. It's just a C rendition of it. Um, but we can use this as our exploit.py. And it all will already base64 encode it for us. So we don't have to write it all out for us. And it just creates an object, blah, blah, blah. Let's just change the argument that it passes and the process command that uh, creates and gives to subprocess. We'll have it be cat and flag will be the argument that we pass to it. So now when we run this, we get this base64 string, which we can go ahead and uh, connect to the server with. So they've got this netcat connection here. We'll go over there. And our base64 string right now should cat the flag for us which it does, <laughs> and it gets us this right here. So that's it. That's the exploit, honestly, and that, then there's your flag. You can make this do whatever you want, keep in mind, because now you have, like, remote code execution. I wonder what's in, etc. password. Can we read it? Will it work for us, etc.? Take a look. Get this base64 code. I don't know if it'll be returned for us or not, but 
experiment might as well. And there we go. We get an etc. password file. So that's the thing. Don't ever uh, trust Pickles and Python, and that's how you would end up exploiting it when you create an object with um, pickled data. Their server code just loads it and works with it. We can take advantage of it, not even worrying about this name variable. When I was running, when I was doing this in the competition, I got so tripped up on, like, how am I going to be able to get name to evaluate into something? You don't even have to worry about name. You can just use that reduce... um, special function or like inherent function and mod- and method within any python object and once there is any notion of this object once it's ever created it runs this and you'll be able to work with whatever you want so that's awesome and it's really cool but I'm bummed and still sour a little bitter that I wasn't able to get it during the game <laughs> but I get it now and I feel like I learned something really cool with it so thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in a later video